Well, I want to present my comments about gun control, and I also want to present angles that are never presented on either side of the argument for gun control. First off, we want people to think back to the 1930s. The 1930s was a time of the Great Depression, when people were out of work and they were skilled. It wasn't like they were out of work and they were unskilled. On this person's back of his sign, it says, I know three trades. I speak three languages. I fought in a war for three years. I have three children. I have no work for three months and I only want one job. This was not a person looking for a handout. But on the opposite side, I want to say this. If, you know, there was no government assistance really except for, you know, some of the works programs that were started by F FDR, but really, there really wasn't any government assistance per se. And any government assistance that was given was in exchange for hard work. But look at the crime rate in the 1930s. The crime rate in the 1930s was extremely low. Now, I also want to bring out even how the government was in the 1930s, or how people were in general. And this is really at the heart of a lot of things that are going on in society, and it's also at the heart of the gun control argument, too. As an example, this is a true story, in 1930, a number of people had already begun to set up camps in New York City's Central Park, but were quickly evicted by the police. However, as the Depression progressed and conditions worsened, attitudes of the public changed, and public sentiment became more sympathetic. In July of 1931, 22 unemployed men sleeping in a park were arrested, but upon sentencing, the charges were dropped and the ruling judge gave each of the men $2 from his own pocket. Now, also remember, $2 back then was a much heftier sum than it is today because gold was valued at $20 an ounce. So, you might as well take that times 50, maybe give them all 100 bucks each, right? Out of his own pocket. What judge would do that today, especially in New York City? And what I'm bringing up here is, you know, maybe it's not exactly formal, strict religion, but ever since they took God out of school, for one, the public education system, and, you know, the Ten Commandments about, and also about caring for people, it's all related to religion, right? Right? In a way, everything like that is related to some one of the major three religions. Well, ever since they took that out of there, people have been getting worse and worse. As each generation comes by, people are more nar narcissistic and they're less. They have less empathy towards their fellow, you know, countrymen or citizen or whatever you want to call them. Right? They don't have that anymore. This is Central Park in the 1930s. Could you imagine them having rowboats today? <laughs> you know, talk about, you know, we're talking about gun control. I mean, they wouldn't even let you have a rowboat out there like this. I mean, oh, they can wear your safety jackets, and oh, you got to wear this and that. you got to have a license to row, and, you know, that's what it'd be doing. And uh, back in the 1930s in Central Park, you can walk in Central Park it's Saturday night, late at night, in dark, Central Park, not, not lit up the way it is today, in the 1930s, and not worried about getting mugged or raped or beaten up or murdered or all this garbage. None of that stuff. None of that stuff would happen. And, yes, it's partly because, well, there was no gun control. There was not, I think anybody could buy a gun. Actually, before 1968, uh, you can go in the Sears Roebuck catalog, buy guns, and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, you know what happened you know, the, the assassination of Kent John F. K. In, in November of 1963, that really pushed the gun control. But you know, it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald. It was, you know, it was a government conspiracy for crying out loud. I mean, it's proven now. I mean, Lee Harvey Oswald, he wasn't even up on that floor. Where you know, you know, the whole thing is every which way from Sunday. You know, the, the official story has fell apart many times over. 
Now, also look at this, and I want to present this argument to people that are really, you know, in favor of lots of gun control. But, you know, because, you know, a lot of people that are in favor of lots of gun control, they're not familiar with guns, right? But everybody's familiar with a car, driving a car. Right now, we don't have controlled transportation where everything's computerized like Google Cars where you, you plug in your destination and it occurs where you're going to go and blah, blah, blah. Well, just think about it. I mean, you know, if a car was a brand new invention today, you know, you got cars going 60 miles an hour one way or, or more and going in the opposite direction. What's to stop somebody from going across this grassy median and killing everybody, you know, coming into traffic, say they're suicidal and they want to take people out. What's to stop them from doing that? But, you know, you drive a car all the time. It's not stopping you from driving a car. Maybe it's not a perfect analogy, but you got to remember human nature is not what, you know, I think the gun things, is, it's, it's given a bad rap because of what's going on in TV or movies. It shows so much violence. I mean, even the St. Valentine's Day massacre that happened in the 1930s, it shocked the hell out of everybody, uh, shocked the nation. Um, is You know, it's going on today in major cities every day, things like that. And, it, and it, it doesn't shock the nation. Actually, in the 1930s, the movies actually portrayed the 1930s very incorrect. Because they always showed the gangsters and all that. That was only going on amongst the gangsters in a very, very, very infinitesimally small section of society. For the most part, people in the 1930s all the way up to the 1950s could leave their doors unlocked at night. They didn't have any problem with anything. They could walk the streets safely at night. Partly, we yes, asked it was because people were armed. But that's not the whole thing. It's because of the way people's attitudes were. See, when you took out the Ten Commandments out of school, and you you know you took away all types of, you know, God is the authority. Well, there you go. That's this is what happens. This is what happens. And also, if you want to even look at you know, gave the example of. <clears throat> driving down the road. Somebody can jump across the median and go into traffic. Well, say you're in a crowded restaurant. This is a crowded restaurant. Everybody's having dinner. They have steak knives and they got forks. And what, what, What's not to stop people from getting in a big knife fight? Everybody's got a knife. Everybody's got a nice steak knife in their hand. I mean, so say everybody had a gun. In their, in their, I mean, would they have a shootout? Would this happen? I mean, why wouldn't they just have a knife fight? I mean, it's quiet, you know, it's slick, silent and deadly, you know? I mean, it's not even traceable, for crying out loud. Why, you know, why Why doesn't this happen? It's not human nature for it to happen. That's why. But more and more things are happening that are evil in our society, not just because of the governmental laws or policies, well, it is, I guess, indirectly because the governmental laws and policies have took all mention of God and the Ten Commandments out of the schools. We got communist schools. I mean, they're garbage. That's what's going on. So the public, you know, each generation is getting less and less moral. And also they're getting desensitized to violence through all the garbage on video games. Oh, you know. I mean, the big money out there, even the big money that advertises for this video platform, you know, they're all into that. I mean, for crying out loud, they're, they're part of the problem. Also, you know, I ride a motorcycle. Not this kind of motorcycle. It's a scooter. But, um, but you know, what's to prevent somebody from deliberately killing me or bumping me off the road when, say, when nobody's looking or something? What, what would stop them from doing that? I mean, I'm vulnerable on a motorcycle. Or you could be walking down the street or down the side of the roadway on a country roadway. What's to stop somebody from hitting you with a car? I mean, that's a lethal weapon. A car is a lethal weapon against a pedestrian and also a motorcyclist. 
So why, you know, how do you stop that? You see, it's like the same kind of, you know, it's the same reason this doesn't happen where people, uh, cars don't knock out the motorcycles and say they're doing it on a lonely highway or country road or pedestrians. It's the same reason that guns don't, people that own guns don't do it. It's just not human nature. But human nature was, people were better back in the 1930s. I'm not being nostalgic here. and I, This is before my time. I remember the 1950s and early 60s. But I don't remember the 1930s, but it's quite obvious that things started really falling apart probably in the mid, mid or early 60s. I think by 1970, they really were falling apart bad. Now, I know the younger generation might think the 1980s is way better than it is today. That's probably true. But I'd have to, you know, extrapolate that the 1930s was probably a hell of a lot better than the 1950s. And actually, just looking at the amount of crime that was in the 1930s, under the economic conditions that existed, where people were starving, destitute, they had to feed family, they you know they knew their trades and they still couldn't find a job, they weren't, you know, there wasn't a major crimes. And there was no gun control. None. Now, the opposite, the other thing you tell you want to give another example, it's probably, this is probably scarier than anything. Say somebody's driving a liquid fuel tanker. My God, could you imagine what you could do with this? Well, you know, it's just endless what I could bring up about, you know, what a person could possibly do. But what I am afraid of, though, is if the government gets too much power because if there's one force on this earth that could do more damage to the population than anything is the government itself. Not saying a cop, well, you know what? The police have changed over the years, too. Everything's changed. You know, the police today kind of dress like, I don't know, they got SWAT teams, and they never used to have all that stuff. Um, I remember, you know, I remember even the DUI laws, which were always on the books. They were never enforced the way the big money racket is today. And I don't drink at all or anything like that or, you know, don't smoke cigarettes or smoke weed or drink or do any of those things. But, you know, I remember people, if they could, were weaving down the road and driving bad. The cop would pull them over and tell them, hey, sleep it off for an hour and be on your way or something, you know. They wouldn't do the stuff they got to do today. But it's very bad that today we have too much, you know, everybody's, well, you know what it is. The big money power is, I don't know how to say it, I mean, other than that. I mean, I guess there's another phrase you can use for it, but that's the quickest phrase I could think of. The big money powers just want to control the whole damn population. Um, Now, back in the day... You know, I used to respect the police back in the, in the earlier days, decades ago. And gradually, I lost respect for them. Like, these police, from a different time, were real, true police officers. And it's not just being nostalgic, but you could tell they were there to protect and serve the public. Yes, I know the police have always had bad apples, but today, it's like there's a lot of bad... Well, the whole thing is just it's, just... it's just overbearing with regulations. And even if you got good cops, there's... They got so many regulations they got to enforce. It's it's ridiculous. I, I've lost all respect for law enforcement in general. I've not been that way all my life. Oh, no. Not at all. Not at all. But back in the day, it was much, 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 much different. And, you know, this is another problem that's going on it's like and and honestly you know even if you're looking at you know the shootings that have been happening um you know parkland shooting right the sheriff scott israel hey guy had freaking 50 million warnings he didn't let do nothing and the guy that was outside the building who was a cop he didn't do nothing and, you know, these guys get all this equipment and SWAT team stuff and massive budgets. And they couldn't stop, you know, just, well. Also, there was another witness in there that said they saw a professional shooter dressed in full body armor 
which obviously wasn't this Nicholas Cruz, right? And also, if you look in the Pulse nightclub, go look on, um, I forgot what it is. It's not on YouTube. It's, uh, I don't know, it's some, I don't know, it's some other thing. You'd have to look for the actual sounds uh, where somebody was filming from a rooftop, the SWAT team entering the Pulse nightclub. Well, a 13-man SWAT team. 30 rounds each, they fired 390 rounds inside of 3 or 4 seconds. And according to Judge Napolitano's, uh, you know, he, re- he retained the 911 transcripts, which were all scrubbed off the Internet. He, he, determ- he said that there was nobody died in the club until right before, up until the time the SWAT team entered. Well, almost 400 rounds fired, ricocheting all over the walls. What do you think? And then you got this guy, Omar Mateen. He used to work for G4S. He had all government security clearances. G4S was like basically part of the government. That's another angle completely. But it's an angle you got to look at, too. I don't go down these things, you know, where it never happened, it, you know, nobody died, and it's crap like that, but obviously there's other stuff going on, there's augmentations going on here, and set up scams going on, with these things the most of them, most of the time but even without this happening if people were more honorable the way, in this country the way they were back, say, 80 years ago it would be vastly different in this country if people today are freaking screwed up and it's because they've been taught to be this way everything's like a societal social problem that the government needs to fix actually it comes right down to the individual you know I mean this cop is wearing a cop uniform but he's he's doing everything you know he's he's everything he's everything rolled up into one that's how they should be you know, police like this back in the day, I respected highly. I do not anymore. I'm scared of these guys, to tell you the truth. The new ones, not the old ones. But, um, you know, usually, you know, think with guns, you know. Think like uh, when you go to a restaurant, you got 100 people in there, 150 people. A crowded restaurant, everybody's got a steak knife. How come it doesn't? How come a big steak knife brawl doesn't break out? Everybody's drinking. Usually they're having drinks with their meal, right? Think about it. Why? Why does it not happen? See, you're, you see, people that are into want this gun control. Usually they're not familiar with guns, but there's a lot of stuff that in their everyday life that's potentially very lethal, and probably more lethal than guns. Like, you know, knives are lethal. They can be. I mean, I always like, you know, I have knives because I work on cars usually. You know, they're useful tools. But obviously has ni- everybody has knives in their kitchen, right? Now how come people don't, you know, oh, I get a knife fight at the kitchen table? Or how come people, when they drive the car, they don't try to run over pedestrians when nobody's looking? Or knock motorcycles off the road or something? Why come they don't do that? Or fuel tank truckers lighting a match or something. You know, why did they do not do that? They don't do that, right? It's because people were fastly, people have changed. It's been a slow change over the generations. And it's imperceptible, you know, over a few years. But when you start looking back a couple of decades and you go back more decades, it's it's very 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 noticeable, and actually it's pretty damn noticeable even in our politicians too. But could you imagine a judge today finding two uh, twenty two people that were vagrants sleeping in the park? They were already arrested by the police. That he drops all the charges and then he hands them money out of his own each one of them money out of his own pocket. Could you imagine a judge doing that today? Especially in New York City. This was in 1931, July 1931. 
true story. But that's that's the total disconnect we got between back then and now. We've advanced immensely technologically by communications and, you know, I don't know, transportation. But as far as what we've advanced as people, like the human race, we degraded. There's no doubt about it. See, that's one of the problems with this stuff, with the gun control. I'm personally, I think there should be no rules on the gun control. None. Like, yeah, if somebody wants to go buy, somebody wants to go look up on Google stores or Amazon or eBay, buy a gun, go ahead. Use the PayPal account, buy buy again, you know, problem, right? That's the way I think it should be. No registration, no instant background check like the stupid NRA wanted. None of that. Forget about it. But then, people, if they need a, you know, I know they said separation is church and state. Well, you know, who the hell ever told the government that you got to get involved in the education system and run the whole damn thing and control it? That's the other side of it, right? See, when they took God and the Ten Commandments and moral authority out of the schools, well, that's been the slow down, downward slope that's been going on ever since. It's probably really been going on since the 1800s, you know, 1930s to today is obvious, but it's probably going on even from you know, 1850 to the 1930s or something. It's been going on a long time. Yeah, you know, I mean, I look at a gun like a tool. It's it's. Uh... Oh yeah, I also want to mention this. I know they're talking right now. The latest buzz is about the 3D printed guns and like, you know, I'll tell you this. I got news for you, Sherlock's. Anybody who's even a half decent machinist can make a gun, not just out of plastic, out of metal, the, the real way. You got people in the Philippines making uh, Colt 1911 45 pistols with uh, files and, uh, you know, these uh, I don't know, the grinding wheels that they operate with a foot pedal. I'm talking. They're not. They're not. They're not even using like CNC equipment or nothing, or end mills and lathes and stuff. <laughs> like somebody else could just dial in and make this stuff real easy. Anybody could do that stuff today. Anybody could make this stuff. I mean, anybody could make uh, custom. You know, if you need to make custom bearings for a motorcycle that's an antique, they got shops out there. You can make guns. It's plastic guns. Why would you want to make one out of plastic? You can make one out of stainless steel or carbon steel or something like that. Why would you want to make it out of plastic? And that's another thing they're trying to make. Oh, it's unregistered. Well, so what? It's unregistered, you know? Now, it's supposed to be registered. Um, but, you know, did you register your steak knife? I don't know. Did you register your steak knife? Do you have a steak knife permit to eat food in here? I don't know. Do you have that? Maybe you should have one of those, right? So, I don't know. See, you see, when you're familiar, everybody's familiar with steak knives. Everybody's familiar with driving your own car. Maybe 50 years, maybe 20 years from now, the new, newest generation is going to be like, people used to drive their own car? That's sick. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> Didn't they crash into each other? Suppose they fall asleep or make a mistake. You know, man. Eh. Well, you know, obviously. <laughs> you know, people today, everybody drives a car, so they don't think about it. People use a steak knife in a restaurant all the time. They don't think about it. Most people don't use a gun all the time. But you think about it, cars, car could be pretty, oh, truck, truck. Hey, you don't even need to have a, a tanker truck. You can have, um. Uh, a pickup truck with 55 gallons of fuel in the back and a bunch of those 55 gallon drums. Wow. You know? I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> a person's got to do something, they're going to do it. But, like I said, you know, people t- 
today, there's a lot more. There's a lot more screwed up people out there today than there, there was, despite the imagery you get from the 1930s Hollywood movies. Boy, they make it look like the gangsters are all over the place, everyday event. Oh no, no, that's not true. There's a lot more violent crime going on in the major cities today than there ever was during the gangster times. The gangster times was inter intramural between the gangsters and themselves competing factions and the gangsters and the police but even then most of the time that didn't happen because there would have been none of them left to bring the product like which was booze you know during the prohibition era to market you know but hollywood you know they made so many movies about it oh it's just like well you know hey i guess the advertising I just didn't mind that because basically that's what it was, you know. Hollywood movies way back when, with all the gangster violence, violence is basically the clickbait, as you know, people talk clickbait on YouTube or on the internet or Facebook. Well, it was the clickbait of the 1930s movie industry to get you to watch the movie. Oh, Saint Valentine's Day Massacre didn't happen that much. It was very, you know, very, you know, even today. It was a lot more things going on worse than that. But I can tell you, I used to respect the police a lot. And uh, unfortunately, today I'm scared of them, man. I'm like, I don't know what the hell to think of these guys, man. That They're not these, these, these police we're looking at right here. That's what cops should be. They should be like this. And I'm thinking, I don't, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't like these, these guys, the new ones, I don't, I don't like them bad news but you know why should they be the only ones that got guns that's crazy you gotta be kidding me I'm not talking and the old time the old time police man if she's man these guys are great They're great but then they were raised under like people were going to church more often people were you know learning school about God and the Ten Commandments right and wrong they don't teach that anymore separation of church and state who the hell you know what that's not what they've meant by that in the constitution first but second off who the hell says that the government should have a monopoly on education and brainwashing kids well obviously the marxist government says so right that's really what's going on the marxist government is really pushing for this gun control but you the people that are actually advocates of this think about it think use some common sense look at some of the points I made because you know I personally I would like to see all gun control go away but then again I want to see people get really morally upright and respectful to each other the way they used to be in the 1930s I mean you really can't just get rid of all gun control without getting back that you know uh, moral fortitude that people used to have, honor, doing the right thing. You just can't have it, you know. You just can't. Ha- I mean, that's where these dumb rules are coming from. Because there's a lot of people out there that are just a bunch of, I don't know, they got no empathy. They're narcissist, narcissistic people. They don't care. Hooray for me and hell with everybody else. That's how the government's actually taking more and more control. So, you know, hopefully I put out a few more angles here on this gun control issue than, you know, the normal stuff you usually hear out there. Uh, hurrah, Second Amendment. Yeah, the NRA did this. You know, whatever. I don't really like the... I like gun owners of America way better than the NRA. But, um... I'm a common sense guy. That's really what it comes down to. It's kind of like it's... And I'm not a guy that likes a lot of rules, but <coughs> I look at it like this. <coughs> you know, with gun control, you know, I, I realize there's an evil force behind the whole thing. It's actually very dangerous because, uh, you know, if you look back historically, if you look at uh, G- you know, the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership and all their research, it's governments that have actually killed more people than anything with guns governments 
I mean, not these guys, not these kind of cops. But this was back when we had limited government and everybody was taught, you know, to do the right thing. Today, the cops are taught to do the right thing means go obey the state and tell them what to do, whatever, collect as much money as possible. That's doing the right thing. <laughs> anyway, over and out.